In our last episode, we changed out our rusty old chain and showed you through our ground tackle, introducing our new Mantis Storm Anchor. Okay, so we're doing something a little bit different today. We are getting rid of our old life raft. It pretty much came with the boat and we decided we'd swap it out for a new one. And uh, we're just really interested to see if it's, uh, if it, if, if it's gonna blow up. So we're gonna take it to land and uh, see what happens. So. A, a harness around it to get it off the boat so yeah that was an interesting little scenario and he wouldn't want to have lifted that any heavier but we got her off so we'll see if she inflates okay so we have come up to the car park above uh, Shoot Harbour and we've got our life raft all set up you can see and we're gonna see if she inflates this will be interesting <laughs> radio radio Amazing, I did not expect it to inflate. Okay, so you can see that Darren's just holding the uh, life raft upside down just at the minute. That's a uh, reflective marking in case she goes upside down. And down here is the, um, the canister that blew it up. You can see it's a bit rusty. <laughs> There's rust coming out of there. There's actually a couple of different handles so if it ends up in the water and it's upside down you could sort of launch yourself up on the side of that and literally just pull it over it's it's quite light so uh, they're actually pockets and they fill up with water you can see there's a big cavity in there so so they're kind of like ballast yeah it just stops it getting thrown over it's, it just puts a little bit more weight into it we've got a little battery pack here for the although they look like they might be shot <laughs> what's that for the strobe light yeah there's a strobe light on the top of the on top of the uh, raft <laughs> I'm amazed it blew up. I really am. Yeah, so am I. Okay. Okay, so I've climbed up my ladder. It was a bit of an experience, but I got in. You can use these to pull, help pull yourself in. These are all around the raft and you can grab up on the ladder and whoever's in the raft can help the next person come in. So that's how that works. And then you can shut this whole life raft up. I'll just show you, you just pull on a nifty little, a little rip cord. So, you just pull on this cord. Woo! <laughs> okay. So this is our cozy little life raft. And it's our home until we get rescued and it's really sturdy so uh, it's got this frame on it so that uh, you know if you roll over it's not going to crush and uh, yeah it's a six-man life raft there's six positions that people can actually sort of sit in 
and if you just watch you can sort of get up in behind here and you're pretty safely tucked in and that'll pretty much keep you if you're rolling around and bustling around in uh, heavy weather so yeah the other thing to note is this little viewing hole can provide ventilation <laughs> hang on a minute <laughs> But you can also stick your head out and take a look at the view, see if there's anyone out there. So, this is the vision tube, will keep me sort of keep the water out of the life raft, but allow me to sort of sit up and see what see what's going on. <laughs> okay. So there were a couple of ration packs that we'll check out that we've put out of the life raft but there's also this ring on a on a lanyard and you can throw that out into the ocean to help people pull themselves towards the life raft and also tucked away in this little pocket here was this knife so this is a specifically made knife for a life raft it won't actually puncture the life raft uh, if with, it, with its cutting procedures but you can actually use it as a can opener and um, for whatever else you might need if you're fishing or whatnot but yeah it won't puncture or damage the life raft so this is a specifically made life raft knife so that comes and sits in there okay so this valve here actually inflates the floor of the raft so you get your foot pump out and your pumpity pumpity pump and you've got a uh, double skin floor to sit on to help protect you from the elements. So we've got this little light here that'll come on. It's just amazing how they build these rafts. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, there's a whole lot of thought, a yeah. really lot of thought gone into it. It's fantastic. Yeah. I can see where the money comes into it when you, yeah, when you yeah. start looking around at what they've actually done. So this is our little home away from home, our little life raft and uh, we hope we never have to get in it but I'm actually feeling very secure in the case that we ever do have to get in. This is a very well built little rafty vessel. So, <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is a little bit of a life ring kind of thing. You can throw it out from inside the raft out to somebody and they can grab onto that and pull themselves in. And then this is the boarding ladder. You can grab onto these all the way around the raft. And this is the boarding ladder that you would climb up to. And hopefully there's somebody else in there and they can help heave you into the raft. So that's how that kind of works. Okay, so these are all the goodies that were in the life raft. We'll just take you through them. So this is six packs of protein bars. Uh, they're rations to to eat and uh, oh they're not in bad condition Darren reckons we might try them for dinner so <laughs> I'll give them a go <laughs> uh, and then we've got a little fishing line some seasickness tablets uh, we've got directions on how to signal and how to inflate the light how to look after the life raft and how to let the flares off so that's a really good thing to have. Uh, this is our waterproof torch with some spare batteries, so that's pretty cool. And this is uh, some Paynes and Wessons um, waterproof matches and a whistle and a bung. So that's good to have on board as well. We've got a tin opening knife. We've got six rations of Seven Oceans water pouches. So you want to be careful with use of that. Darren was trying to tell me that these are actually sea biscuits and that you actually, they're dehydrated and you reinflate them and you can eat them, but they're actually sponges. <laughs> so that's well, what you they tried are. to eat <laughs> Not so tasty. <laughs> they're actually to mop up the water. <laughs> so. Okay. We've got a bunch of flares, so this is an orange, two orange smoke flares. Some uh, red 
need handheld flares and two, ro two sets of rocket flares. So that's some good signalling to have. So if you see a vessel nearby or a helicopter or a plane in the air, time to let those go. What else have we got? We've got some sunburn cream and some sunscreen. So that's a good combo to have. And we've got a, a nice little signalling mirror here um, just to get somebody's attention. It's, um, you get the sun in the right place and yeah, quite handy little, little gizmo. Um, some instructions on the back to give you some guide on it, how to use it. Yep. Uh, so yeah. you ping that one in someone's eye and they know you're around. Okay, we've got the, uh, the old foot pump to help keep the old life raft floating. Yeah, still working like a treat as well. Amazing, really good nick. And this little fella here, I, I believe it's to, uh, it's got two overinflation valves inside the life raft. It's, as when we let it off, you could hear it actually um, expel on the excess air, and it, it stops it blowing the life raft apart. But if they fail. You can you can poke that in into the overinflation valve to stop it um, losing any more air. So the, the thought of really everything on this this life raft is really really good, quite yeah. impressive. Yeah. So we've also got um, a patch repair kit with some glue and some scissors, so you can patch the life raft if you do get a hole in it. This is called sea marker dye, so you actually. Uh, let this out into the ocean and it lets out a, a trail of, of dye, of orange dye and um, that'll let people know that there's someone in the water, someone around, something unusual happening. So, And last but not least, we've got a couple of paddles. I'm paddling honey. I think you're aground. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the drogue. So what you do is you set this out. So basically what happens is you set that out and it pops off behind the life raft and basically fills with water and it um, it stops the filling with the seawater actually sort of stops the slows the, the life raft down because it creates drag on the life raft. So that's basically what the drogue is, kind of how that works. It'll also help stop it tipping over as well. It helps sort of keep the life raft on its feet a little bit better. Yeah. Create creates a bit more stability. Yeah, great idea. So that's what they're for. Righty ho, so that's about our life raft. I have to say, I am absolutely stunned that the life raft is still inflated. Avon life rafts, good on you. Absolutely, <laughs> I'm, I'm quite impressed with the quality of that yeah. thing after all these years. Yeah. Uh... Okay, so that was a bit of a fun experiment with the old life raft there to see how things work. And that is one of the reasons that we did actually go through and uh, take the time to test our old life raft. I mean it was 30 years old, we weren't expecting it to actually inflate at all but I've actually done um, life raft training before and Darren hadn't done life raft so he, he had a general idea about what to expect and I think a lot of cruisers who do buy their life rafts have got a general idea of what to expect with their life raft but um, not to actually, haven't actually seen how it all operates and, and what actually does occur. So that's kind of one of the reasons we had our old one ready to throw out. We thought we may as well do the trial and see what happened and show you guys um, what's in a life raft and how it actually functions. So that was pretty quite cool actually, wasn't it? It was a great little experiment and uh, you certainly never stop learning. This is one of Darren's concerns. The old life raft was actually a six man and uh, she's pretty weighty, pretty heavy and so he wanted to know whether he could actually lift that himself and actually get that over the, the guardrails and into the water. And I know that the perfect scenario is that you're supposed to wait for the 
life raft to float off your boat to step up into the life raft and that is the goal but you know don't know about your cruising boat but Sarian has got a lot of appendages to her so you know we've got this bimini and we've got the solar arch and the radar arch and we've got the, the backstays and even though the life raft is actually situated for us on the back there is the potential that it'll actually snag on all the appendages yeah. so um uh, he really wanted to see whether he could lift that himself and get that overboard. And yeah, as Darren says, um, same thing with a dinghy. Uh, with those who have got the thought that we won't have a life raft, we'll step into our dinghy and have that loaded up with gear. Um, it's a good thought. Yes. What happens if you actually hit a container? If you hit a container or something and you're sinking, you're out on the water in minutes. You know, yeah, there's, there's that's really not much time. To not a lot of it. time to then be trying to untie your tender and um, and get it and all your gear and in the water. Um, so I've read a blog of their vessel caught fire. They had four minutes, four minutes of fighting the fire is what they were doing before they realised it was useless, and then they were in the water floating with a life ring, if I remember correctly. Mm. They didn't have a life raft and they nothing else came free of the boat it all just sank within four minutes so there's those sort of scenarios to think about if you are wondering whether you'll have a life raft or whether you'll go the tender option um, yeah you know stormy weather happens on the coast as well strange things happen at sea and every, as you've seen, <laughs> every scenario is different so yeah. you don't really know what's going to yeah. go your way if things are going really bad you yeah. just you know people think oh well you know we'll just throw the the tender over the side and uh you know that's a great thought but it's uh it doesn't necessarily always work like that if conditions are really bad if, if you can unleash your tender in less than a minute it's well tied down in really bad conditions I'd be pretty impressed to see it all happen. You know, say for example the boat has been rolled and one of us has got a dislocated shoulder or a broken limb or is, you know, unconscious or whatnot, you're going to have to maybe launch that raft by yourself. And uh, yeah, big task, big task in what could be really heavy weather. Yeah, well, so, that's, that, that six man uh, life raft, it, it's really, it's a two man lift, you know, it's, it's it's 30 plus kilos not that heavy but big and awkward you just can't you just can't get a grip on the thing so uh, yeah, yeah oddly enough Darren had to tie tie a tether around tie a rope around that raft to be able to maneuver it by himself yeah. uh, which would have been no help to yeah, well, then have the life raft open yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah just an interesting couple of little tests that we did uh, just to see how things would work yeah. so yeah but I'm really happy with the life raft. Um, if you're wondering about value for money, uh, you know, it's, it's the four man life raft is around about between two and two and a half grand. A six man would be sort of two and a half to three grand or something like that. Um, great build quality. Really, really well made life pods is the conclusion that I've come to. Yeah, look, you can see where the money is when you when you start looking around at, you know, the cost of them, you know, when you look at a normal inflatable tender would far outweigh the cost of a life raft. So, uh, it, yeah, they're, they're really, for what they are, they're quite cheap. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, that is a self-sustaining pod. It's, it's very robust. It's very well made. Um, it's got all the gear already packed into it that you need to survive as you saw. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about a thing. All you've got to do maybe is grab your grab bag and, and launch the raft and get in it. So whatever the scenario is that's occurred, and you have to unfortunately abandon the ship, that life raft for the $2,000 that we spent, it's a, it's a, it's it's a no-brainer. Yeah, it it's, is an that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Somebody says, you know, what price your life? And that's pretty much the good question. Yeah. So you'll, you'll have to work that one out yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, our tender costs more than the life raft, yeah. actually. So, you know. But just to track through that, um, as far as the build goes, 
So it's a self-inflated floating pod, you know, the life raft. Um, you, you throw it out or it floats off your boat, whichever scenario occurs. So it has handholds on the base to help you right it and it's also got handholds all the way around the base of the life raft on the outside that you can hold on to. So you can swim over or pull the life raft over to you and you can hold on to those. The trick, even in tropical waters, is to get out of the water and keep your body out of the water warm and dry. So that's your survival trick. So you reach into the front of the life raft, you pull out the ladder and you pull yourself in. And then you can throw out that life ring and help pull your other people in. And then once you get in the life raft, you can uh, inflate the base of the floor and you can get the sponges out and keep it nice and dry because that's the trick. You've got to keep yourself warm and dry. The fully enclosed version, I don't know if you would have seen it, had a truss that came right across the top of it and that actually makes the whole lot very strong. It's very well braced. Yeah, isn't it's it? very, very rigid. It's got those internal body restraints that you can sort of lock yourself in behind if it is really foul weather and if the weather clears up and you're still on board you can you can um, roll that door up or down and let in a bit of fresh air and a bit of sunshine, do some fishing or have a look around and see if there's any land in sight that you might have the strength to paddle to or, or whether there's some other ship that you want to set off your flares. Yeah and so, it's got the, the the little uh, bags underneath it for extra ballast and and uh, the drogue, it, it'd be very stable in the water, you yeah. know, much, much more than a, a, a tender. Yeah. You, you just don't have to worry about it and it's got the internal restraints so if the weather's bad and there's a few of you in there, at least you're not getting thrown on top of one another. It's it's really purpose built, and just, uh, just great really. Yeah. So I hope that was really helpful for you and if you're wondering what your life raft actually does, <laughs> I might have given you a bit of insight into that yeah. and uh, if you're wondering whether or not there's value in a life raft then you know you, you might have, hopefully we've, we've helped you out with that. So our next video is going to be a Q&A answering the questions that came through from our uh, from you guys about the uh, ground tackle and our storm anchor. So yeah, we got some really interesting questions from that one and well worth uh, putting in the Q&A. So keep an eye on that, out for that for next week. And i uh, just like to say a big thank you for watching. Hope you got a lot out of that. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. Please uh, click on the, uh, the uh, bell at the top right and uh, YouTube will let you know when our next video comes out. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be great if you gave us a big thumbs up, that'd help us out a lot, and please comment below. Alright, thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.